Hi, I'm Derek from Good Times Marine, and I'm out here today having some good times in some mildly rough weather. It's not exactly wild out here, but it's rough enough to be able to see how this Seafarer X-Series Vagabond 6.2 goes. Now, you will note there's a single engine on the back. We're a firm believer that you don't need two on a boat like this, and I think from the performance characteristics we've got out of this boat, we're probably on the money. You'd have to need a specific reason why you would need twin engines, like survey or something like that. But this boat performs phenomenally well. We're getting 81 and a half Ks out of this 250 Verado. And with the trim tabs, which are standard on the X-Series, if there is any listing with this big deep V hull of the Seafarer, we can easily correct that with the trim tab. So in my pig coming straight out of the box, I'd say forget the twins, go the single. It is an absolutely stunning boat to drive. Like all seafarers, they've always got an amazing reputation, incredible pedigree, and the Vagabond and the, and the Viking and the Victory, those three in particular, really stand out as great sea boats. Not much is talked about with the Vagabond for some reason. I think the Victory being such an outstanding performer, a lot of people just go straight to a Victory, they don't even think about the Vagabond. But I'm gonna throw some numbers at you that may make you rethink your consideration on whether you're looking at a Victory or a Vagabond, because in my mind, the Vagabond is certainly worth a strong look. X-Series features in both the Victory and the Vagabond include your trim tabs. In the Vagabond only, you've got this magnificent dive door, which if you've never used one, is a great feature to have in a boat. The side pockets are fiberglassed in, and then you've got the windscreen grab rail. So a few unique features in the boat. It does actually only come with one seat in the next series as well. The passenger seat is an option. So it's designed to be that hardcore, maximizing all the floor space design for those guys that just want fishing space and that's it. Now, I've come prepared and I've even got pen to paper. We've done a few measurements. This is the interesting facts about the Vagabond versus the Victory. So, a Vagabond overall on a Dumbia trailer and a Super Roller wide frame. The Vagabond is 7.8 metres, the Victory 7.7, .7, so only 10 centimetres difference from a storage point of view. Moving into the main cockpit, now this is the head turner right here. The Vagabond cockpit's two metres long from the back of this seat to the back of the, of the transom there. 1.8 feet, 1.85 metres wide, giving you 3.7 square metres of space. In the Victory, it's a 1.55 metre distance, so nearly a half a metre shorter and only 1.78 wide, giving a distance of 2.76 square metres. So the Vagabond is giving you an extra full square metre of space in the back of the boat. The actual hull length difference is only 250 to 300 mil overall between the two boats. In the cabin, the, Va the Victory is 12 centimetres longer in the cabin than what the Vagabond is. Not the 12 centimetres makes that much difference. So somehow, Lindsay Fry, when he's designed these boats, has generated an enormous amount of additional space in here without sacrificing much cabin and without costing much overall length. So in my opinion, it makes a big deal when you're out on the water, value for money. This is where it counts, this area back here, and this is where the Vagabond really kicks and goals.